Hey y'all, welcome to the guide to Google Drive sharing. So Google Drive sharing can be really complicated, especially with all the layers that we have in a Google for Education account. It's like peeling the layers of an onion. So every year I update this guide to help teachers better understand how to share and what all of the little layers mean. You can also get this guide in a PDF download. It is shared with a Creative Commons license, so you have my permission to share this with other teachers and to help them understand that. I do want to mention this guide is not really designed for students. This is not something that most students, maybe upper high school, will understand, but it's written in a language for teachers. So let's talk about this. The three steps to Google Drive sharing, the three things I want you to think about when you've decided to share something from your Google Drive. And please note the screenshots and things that you're gonna see in this video are all from the web version, not mobile. Although you can do a lot of the, the different types of sharing that we're talking about from mobile, it is a little bit different. So our first step is you're gonna choose what to share. What files or folders do you wanna share? Uh, share a single file, share multiple files or folders. And then step two, who? Choose who you wish to share the file. Who do you want to see or access this file or folder? And then step three, you're gonna choose what access level to grant. What do you want them to be able to do with this file? So the magic to all of this is the share button. And so you will look for this share button in your Google applications and Google Drive, wherever you are trying to share from. Typically, in a Google application like Google Docs and Sheets and Slides, you're gonna find it in the top right-hand corner. Historically, it's been a blue button, although they are sort of changing that, so it's not always blue anymore. If you're in Google Drive, you're gonna look for the little share person with the plus sign. And that is what I call the Weeble Wobble because it reminds me of those old toys from way back then. So you can share from um, multiple applications and the magic again is finding that share button is the first step. Now, if you wanna invite specific people, then you're gonna click on that share button and this pop-up will appear. And this is where you can invite those specific people or get the shareable link. So in order to invite those people, you just start typing in their email address in that box that says add people in groups. That's a simple way to share. Another quick way to share is the shareable link. And so in that pop-up, so if you saw at the bottom of that pop-up, when you click that share button, there is that little get link option. That, my friends, is where you get the shareable link. Now, they have changed this over the years. And I have to be honest, I think it's confusing. And that's part of the reason why I've had to create this video. But to get a shareable link, you've got to click on change link to. Now, whatever type of account you have, it may look different. If you are in your Google for Education account, you're typically gonna see change link to and your school, um, your school name. So anytime in this video where you see Shake Up Learning, replace that with whatever the name of your school's domain is. So if that is, you know, Austin ISD, you'll see that right there. So after clicking that share button, you're gonna go to that little get link part at the bottom and you're gonna click on change link to shake up or change link to whatever it says. And most of the time this is gonna default to anyone in your domain with the link can view, meaning anybody in your school can view it when we're talking about a shareable link here. And that can be changed later. Don't be scared, but just know that that's what's going to happen once you click that button. And so once you click that button, there's another little pop-up screen, and it looks like this. And from here, you're going to click copy link to copy and paste that link wherever you want to share it. And that might be, you know, throwing that into an email, putting that on a website, wherever it is you need it to go. Then you can also click the drop down if you wish to make it viewable to anyone with the link. So for instance, you see um, mine says anyone in ShakeUp Learning can view. Well, if 
that's the first step, just by clicking that box. I don't get the option, I just get the default. So when I wanna change it to anyone with the link can view, meaning even people outside of my domain, I can click that drop down and click anyone with the link or go back to restricted if I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. And restricted means it's back to private. So we're gonna walk through these visibility levels and that first step of deciding who you want to see your folder. And so I have broken this into six levels. <laughs> and if you're looking at this and you're in your personal account, you are missing the one in the middle. So this is specific to Google for Education. A lot of this does apply um, to a personal account, but you're not gonna see that option for anyone at your school with the link or anyone at your school can find an access. So level three and four are specific to Google for Education. Okay, first level, level one, files and folders are private by default. So I want people to understand, especially new users to Google, when you create a Google Doc, you're the only one who can see it. Um, it can be a little bit scary for people who've never used it or done any kind of cloud computing before, and you know that it can be shared. So just know this, have the comfort that once you create a document by default, it's private and it has a little lock on it. Um, oftentimes you'll even see that lock on your share button when it's private. So I want you to think of this like a locked door and only you, the owner, have the key. And then we move into level two, which I call invite only. And so invite only means this file or folder is just specific for individuals you have invited, like giving them a key to a locked door. And the invitees must have a Google account to log in and view it. So you're, you're giving them the key, but they do have to have a Google account. And then we move on to level three, and this is anyone with the link in your domain. So typically your domain is your school or your school district. And like I showed you with that shareable link, that was the default. And this means that this file or folder may be shared by giving that unique link to anyone in your school's domain. So if this is something that's only being shared internally inside the school district, this is the type of link that you want. Um, and that is your key to granting access. You do have to log in and you do have to have a login with your school's domain. So they have to be connected. Level four, anyone in your domain can find. So this one's slightly different. And this means that the file or folder can be searched for and accessed by anyone with account in your school, uh, your school's domain. So that means you can still share that link and you can still put it in there. But if they go to Drive, they can actually search and find this document, which is handy for a lot of things that may be shared internally, like templates or letterhead and, you know, different types of files like that. And you can log in with your school's domain to view. You do, again, have to be part of the school's domain. Level five is kicking things up a notch, and that's anyone, anyone in the world with the link. So this file or folder may be shared just by giving the link. Again, that's the key to granting access to the file or folder. And the difference here, no login required to view. Now, when I share things on my website, this is typically how I share them. I want, I want teachers to be able... I want teachers to be able to um, access things on the website, but I don't always necessarily want them to be searchable. So that kind of depends on what you want them to do because the next level is public and that's sharing with the world and that also means they can find an access that doesn't mean it's searchable you're not going to show up first in a google search um, and it doesn't require a login to view so public on the web is the highest access um i should say highest visibility level because i'm looking at our next slide which is when we're going to talk about access levels so when you click on that share button and if you see your name or if you see other names who have been shared in a file or folder, you'll also see a drop down next to their name where you can change their access. 
and you can decide what you want them to be able to do if you're the owner. So do you want them to be able to edit, to comment, or just view? So by default, when you switch the, the visibility levels, like I mentioned earlier, it's the lowest level, it's view. And so that's, that's what I just call view only or read only, view only access. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Viewers can see it, they can read it, they can click on links if, if they're in there. Um, you can even download or make a copy of the file. So I share a lot of templates on shakeuplearning.com and I allow people to make copies of those. You can actually disable this if you're the owner, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video. Viewers cannot make changes to the file. They can just view it, and they can't delete it. And then there's uh, comment access, which kicks things up a notch. So commenters can view files or folders and comment and suggest edits on Google Documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and drawings. Commenters can download or make a copy of the file unless it's disabled. Again, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Commenters cannot make edits to the file. They can only comment and they cannot delete the file. So comments are great. It's a great way to get feedback or to have a little bit of a discussion about something without changing the content. So this is something I talk a lot about when it comes to student feedback and especially with writing and the writing process, comments and suggested edits can be really handy. And then we have the highest access level and that's edit. Editors can edit Google Docs, spreadsheets, presentations and drawings. Editors can also invite other collaborators, which you may or may not want. And we're gonna talk about how you can disable that in a little bit too. Editors can download or make a copy of the file unless you prevent it, and they can add or remove items in a folder. So you wanna be very careful when you give edit access. So that's a lot of information. I have this table here. Of course, this is also available in the PDF download where you can see it all side by side and see exactly what rights each level of access will give the user. Now let's talk about that idea of restricting rights and changing ownership. So you can restrict sharing. When you click that share button in the top right, there's a little settings icon and that will open up your owner settings and you can use those check boxes to restrict editors from sharing or who can download, print, and copy. So if you don't want someone to be able to invite another collaborator, or you don't want them to download or print or make a copy, if you check these boxes, that will actually prevent it. And then you can change the owner of a file. So by default, when you create a file, you're the owner. But sometimes we need to give ownership to someone else. So I've got the directions here. You click that share button and next to the, the person's name after they've already been shared with, you can change it to owner. Now you will find some restrictions in your Google for Education account. For instance, they don't typically let you make someone an owner who's outside of your domain. Just um, FYI, I've, I've run into that. And so you can just click that down arrow and make someone else the owner and then click done. You also have the ability to set what's called temporary access with expiration. Now, this is only available in a Google for Education account. You cannot do this in your personal account. A couple of quick notes. Expiration dates cannot be set with for people with edit access. If you make an if you give an editor temporary access, they're taken down to a comment level. And to me this kind of defeats the whole purpose. Um, most of the time, if I'm giving someone a limited amount of time to do something, then I really am probably wanting them to edit. So I kind of wish this worked a little bit different. Um, if you change them back to edit, their, their expiration will be removed. So to set an expiration date, you're going to, again, click that drop down like we saw in the slide before this next to their name in the share window and click on where it says give temporary access. And this is how you can choose how long to grant access and then just click save. 
A quick note, there are some limits on sharing. Google likes to change this a lot, though. So, um, <laughs> in fact, they, they could be changing it as I'm speaking right now. So, just know this is kind of a moving target. Over the years, this has changed so many times. Um, but there are a few limits to be aware of when you're sharing doc sheets, slides, forms, and drawings. So up to 100 people with view, edit, or comment permissions can work in doc sheets or slides files at the same time. When more than 100 people are accessing a file, only the owner and some users with editing permissions can edit the file. So I hope you like these tips. I hope this helps you wrap your head around the whole sharing idea in Google Drive. And remember, um, go down below to the description of this video and you can get that free PDF download so you've got this at your fingertips. Bye, y'all.